Hello and welcome back to the channel for today what's going to be a slightly different video because I want to talk about copyright. It's an issue which is affecting anybody who's trying to use YouTube to learn to play guitar or anyone who's trying to, like me, put out videos teaching people how to learn to play guitar on YouTube, particularly blues, that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. So um, other channels have spoken about this quite recently and, and in the past. I wasn't intending to do anything like this, but I want to tell you what's happened recently, which has made me want to actually um, put out this type of video. So as you've probably seen on my channel, um, I've been putting out a series of videos looking at the Thrillers Gone by BB King. And the last video I put out was play in the style of BB King. So I didn't I didn't copy any BB King. I didn't play anything that BB King played. I came up with licks <clears throat> that were similar and in the style of. And I actually went through and analyzed how BB King plays, the type of note choice, the type of um, techniques he uses on the guitar, etc. And I used that to come up with my own licks. It was actually what I actually teaches and uh, is something I improvised. Uh, so my own licks that are just very, very reminiscent of the type of thing that BB King will play. Not exactly what he played on any given record, but the kind of the general feel. So I put this out. I used the backing track by Butternut Blues, uh, who I'm very grateful let me use their backing tracks. Again, not an exact 100% copy of the original record, but something that's very, very similar and in the same style. Because I'm trying to teach how you would do that if you want to incorporate BB King's playing into your own playing. How do you do that? So I didn't use any original BB King recording. I didn't use any BB King um, actual uh, licks and things. I just things that are very reminiscent. And I got hit with a copyright notice. Now the copyright notice I got hit with is generated by an automated algorithm. So something, a computer system, a cold hearted computer system software looked at what I played and thought I was ripping off BB King, thought I was copying BB King. And so hit me with a, uh, a copyright uh, infringement to say I was using, and what it actually said was I was using the melody of the Thrillers Gone by BB King. Now. Let me show you, I didn't. What I've done is, the way I do, do my lessons now, is I actually pay somebody to write out the tab and the music stave because I can't do that. But they, they produced that for me, so I'll show you what I played. What I'll also put on screen is the original BB King intro solo, the main solo, and his outro solo. So there's actually three guitar solos in, uh, in that song. And what you'll notice, what you should be able to see on screen, is that mine isn't the same as any, one, uh, uh, any of those. It's not a direct copy of any of them. When you hear it, it will sound vaguely in the same style. And I'm not going to play it on this, on this video because I'll just get hit with another copyright infringement. But if you go and check out that video and you hear it, yes, it sounds like BB King. But you can see from the music, Dave, it's not playing the same melody. But the actual copyright infringement I was hit with was not the fact that I was using BB King's name, not the fact that I was using the Thrill Is Gone, the, the name of the song, but I was copying the melody of BB King's The Thrill Is Gone. And when it says the melody, it doesn't mean the melody he's singing, although that is different again. It's de that is certainly not what I'm playing when I play guitar. But the melody, it, it's, uh, it's suggesting that I'm playing my guitar playing is playing the same melody that he plays in one of the solos. And that, as you can see from screen, is simply not true. But what this means is, is that I can't make money from the, uh, I don't get any of the, the advert uh, revenue from that particular video until this is resolved. Um, so it's really frustrating. These play like videos that I do, they take in a, a huge amount of time and effort to put together. Uh, a huge amount of research and I'm deliberately trying not to copy but just to play in the style of. So therefore I'm not infringing anybody's copyright. I've deliberately gone out of my way um, to do this, to not infringe copyright. So other videos that you'll see in that particular series I've talked about, I, I've done a video on the original uh, intro solo. 
So again, I played the solo. I didn't use any of BB King's recording. I played the solo uh, as he plays it over the Button Up Blues back and track. And as soon as I, and then I, I taught, I, so I played it as an example, and then I taught how to, um, how to then play that. As soon as I uploaded that, the algorithm hit it and said, you're infringing copyrights. And I said, okay, fine, I am. So what I then had to do was I took the video down, I split it effectively in half, uh, or not quite in half, but I, I broke it into two pieces. The first piece is just the example solo, right? So that's the piece I'm infringing BB King's copyright on by playing what he played. And I put that out as one video, and then the teaching how to do it bit, I put out as a separate video. That, that second piece, the teaching how to do it bit, that doesn't infringe copyright, because that's just educational. So I put that out as a separate video. So the first video, which is just the performance, the copyright means that the, the, any revenue from that doesn't go to me, it goes to the record company that own the track. But the actual, the teaching piece, it means I can, uh, I can take the revenue from the ad. And, and when we're talking about YouTube adverts, by the way, when nobody's making a fortune off these, you make very, very small amount of money off um, YouTube videos from adverts. Um, I, uh, in fact, a lot of my videos actually lose money. They cost me more money to make than I get back in advert revenue, which is why I rely on the Patreon supporters and the people who use my PayPal tip jar and those things in order to support the channel and keep it going. As I say, I pay somebody to do the, uh, to do the tablature. I have to pay for the Adobe um, video editing software and all those kind of things. It actually costs me money to run this channel, so that's why the, the Patreons keep it going. Um, but, but whatever small amount of revenue I can pull back from the adverts, I'm going to take that because that's going to help keep the channel going. But I, just, I wanted to talk about kind of how frustrating this is. So I understand when I'm playing somebody else's music, fine, you can, the, the record company can keep the, the royalties off the, um, the, the advert revenue off the video. That's fine. That's okay. But in this instance, I wasn't playing somebody else's melody. I was playing what I play. I was playing, yes, in the style of, because that was the point of the video, but I wasn't playing another melody. I was playing something that I literally invented or kind of came up with on the spot because it was, it, it was um, improvised. So that's what's made me so kind of infuriated with this. I've gone out my way to do it this way and I still get hit with this. If I... Now, I, I could just roll over and say, okay, that's fine, and I don't take any of the revenue, but in this case, I've really infuriated me, so I've disputed it. If you dispute it three times and they find against you, then they take your channel down. I can't do YouTube anymore. Um, and the way YouTube works is they won't become the arbiter of this. They, they don't act as a judge or anything. They use their algorithm to flag up that this has broken copyright. They let the record company know and then I have to write to the record company and explain why what I've done doesn't infringe copyright. And it's up to them then to say yes or no. And if they, if they decide no and they, they want to keep the revenue, then that goes back as a copyright strike against me. And I can't do anything about that. And if that happens three times, my channel goes. So I won't be doing it three times. But I thought in this first instance, I was so infuriated. I thought, no, I'm going to stand up for myself. So I kind of understand how we've got here. I want to talk a little bit about kind of, I've, I've had interest in run-ins with copyright in the past. Um, previously, before we were in the world of the internet, the way that everybody would do copyright is you record something, you put it in, a, you literally burn a CD or in, in the olden days, you know, C90 tape, put it in an envelope, put it in a post and post it to yourself. And then when it arrives, you don't open it because that's got proof that you wrote that piece of music on that day. Okay, that's the way, long, long time ago, we used to do copyright. The world's moved on. You can't, can't work like that anymore. So what was happening is when YouTube started, people would put in uh, copies of videos. I mean, literally just like music videos of actual artists, putting them up onto the channel and getting revenue from them. And obviously that absolutely is breaking copyright. So YouTube came up with this really blunt instrument to try and deal with the volume of, um, of videos that are being loaded that were infringing copyright. And it's just this algorithm that just looks at it and says, that sounds like that, and therefore you're breaking copyright. I've been hit with this a few times. Um, one of the times I got hit with it 
I put off a backing track, a 12 bar blues backing track, just generic backing track drums and bass, and I think it was a piano or rhythm guitar or something, for people to jam over. And YouTube came back and said that that was too similar to a 12 bar backing track from somebody else. And of course it was. Of course it was. It's a, it's a, it's a generic 12 bar blues. I think it was like a Chicago style. Of course it sounds similar. They all sound the same. That's the point. It's a generic form of music. Again, I appeal that one and it got, it got, oh, um, the, the other party didn't um, complain about it. And so it, it went in my favor. But you've got this very blunt instrument that's trying to do something that isn't really fit for, for what we're trying to do, which is teach music on YouTube, because I'm not trying to infringe anyone's copyright. I'm trying to pass on what I know. It feels to me like fewer and fewer people are playing blues, particularly in the younger audience. And so I'm trying to keep it alive by keeping playing and, um, and all those things and keep teaching people how to do this. Cause I want people to go out and enjoy playing blues guitar and keeping the blues music, um, alive. So I, in thinking about this, I did, you know, you try, you, tr you, you try and be objective and you think, well, what if it was the other way around? Okay. What if somebody took one of my songs, a, a Northbound song and taught how to play that? Would I, f uh, and they played their version of it as a way of teaching somebody else to play. Would I find that copyright infringement? Would I be annoyed that somebody else did that? Would I think I would deserve some of the revenue? Actually, no. I'll, I'll be honest, if somebody took one of my songs and taught other people how to play it, good on them. That's, that's great. Well done. You know, I, I'm not, that, that's fine. Now you could say, yeah, but nobody's ever heard of me. Whereas, you know, we're talking about, you know, cashing in on big stars. Is that really the case? I'm trying to teach it. I started this YouTube channel not to make money, but to pass on what I, what I know. I want other people to play um, blues. I think part of the problem is the fact that blues is such a generic form of, uh, of music. Um, I mean, in this BB King um, play like uh, analysis that I did, I showed that he's using the pentatonic scale, but even within the pentatonic scale, he's not using all of the pentatonic scale. He's using uh, three particular frets and he's making licks out of just these three frets. So of course, when you look at that, you analyze it and then you bring that into your own playing you think, well, of course I'm going to end up sounding like him because there's only, you know, how many combinations of just three frets can you get? So anyway, I'm starting to ramble now. I'm going to, I'm going to um, end this with a conclusion. I wanted you to know it's really frustrating and it's forcing me to do things like chop videos in half and maybe not do play in the style of videos again if they're going to infringe copyright. I've done a ZZ Top, I've done a uh, play like Eric Clapton, I've done a play like... Um, Jimi Hendrix. Now I've done this play like BB King and I was really proud of it. Done, put so much effort into it. Um, and it's really frustrating for, to be hit with a copyright notice. So anyway, it's, it's very, very annoying. I think something in YouTube needs to change. There is the concept of fair use where you're supposed to be able to use it for education. I mean, that's the very thing I'm trying to do, trying to keep the blues alive. In this case, I wasn't, the copyright infringement was very clear that I'd used the melody of, uh, uh, that was on the original record. So I didn't, I didn't appeal it on the, on the grounds of, of fair use. I've appealed it on the grounds of it's not the same melody. And I will, I've got the music stave to show you if you want to see. So I started this channel to try and keep the blues alive. I'm going to try and keep on doing that. Copyright just makes it really inf frustrating. So um, it's, it's, disappointing and um, that this has happened and I just wanted to rant a little bit about it I guess so um, anyway there we go I feel a little bit better that I've at least got it off my chest anyway until next time when we start up proper lessons again um, I'll see you then